difference in the case against the merger, saying it would result in Americans paying billions of dollars more each year for wireless service. And even with the support of the FCC and the Justice Department, the $26 billion deal will be challenged in court by a handful of states that want to block it from happening. To learn more about the deal, we're joined now by Tom Struble, Manager of Technology and Innovation at R Street. Tom, what does this merger mean for the average consumer? I think it's pretty exciting from the perspective of consumers right now. Uh, the wireless market is in a time of great dynamism right now with the shift in technology from 4G to 5G and also the shift among nationwide carriers from 4 to 3. Uh, so there will be a, a lot of effects we can predict from that, some of which we're already seeing, uh, particularly in terms of price competition. When the DOJ first signed off on it at the end of summer, we saw since then both AT&T and Verizon have rolled out new pricing plans, unlimited data plans that are cheaper than what they had previously. Uh, so we're already seeing lower prices for customers in the market as a competitive response to this added threat from the combined Sprint Timo. Uh, so we're already seeing that today with customers of the big two carriers. And going forward, customers on Sprint and T-Mobile are guaranteed to see at least the same, if not better prices, because they've committed to a three-year price freeze uh, as a condition of the merger, but also significantly better service quality from the combined spectrum, por spectrum portfolio of the two different firms. Uh, so you're going to see better capacity if you're a T-Mobile customer due to Sprint's heavy mid-band uh, spectrum holdings. And if you're a Sprint customer, you're going to see a lot better coverage due to T-Mobile's low-band 600 megahertz spectrum holdings. So those opposed to the deal say it will drive prices up, but and the companies say it'll increase competition. And it seems like you agree with that. But how is it going to increase competition if everyone is consolidating? The U.S. Uh, mobile wireless market hasn't been around for that long. It really only sprang into existence in the mid-90s once we started auctioning off Spectrum. Uh, and we had initially a ton of different firms getting into the space, building networks and trying to operate them. And then over the past two decades, we've seen a lot of consolidation as the market matured and companies realized that there had to be a certain level of scale to run an efficient wireless uh, business in this country. So I think that while going from four to three, if you even think of it that way, if, if you just, I guess, discount what DISH might potentially do in the market uh, going forward, uh, you might say, well, that's a reduction in firms, so you, it's going to lead to natural price increases. But there's nothing magic about the number four. Some markets, once they are mature, they settle around you know, two or three competitors. Some markets have many more, depending on basically CapEx to OpEx ratios. If something is very capital intensive, you're not going to have as many firms competing in that market as you would with something with relatively low CapEx. So telecom, very CapEx heavy and very you know, intensive. So we've seen a lot of concentration in these industries. That doesn't mean they're not competitive. Uh, obviously, you know, more competition, more firms competing is generally a good thing. But I think here, based on the market shares of the existing participants, the combined Sprint Timo will be a much stronger competitor to AT&T and Verizon Wireless, the two market leaders. Uh, and we will also see with Dish, uh, who had potentially, you know, been a new entrant in this market for a while. They've been dipping their toes in here and there, buying Spectrum, looking into deployment models. But now, with the DOJ conditions attached to this, they're getting significant Spectrum divestitures and great deals when it comes to backhaul interconnection agreements for the next few years. So some people are saying that you can't trust Dish to do this but they have very strong incentive to make good on their promises to the DOJ and to follow through with their commitments they made to the FCC. So even though the market is temporarily going from four to three, there's actually good reason to think it'll go back to four or even maybe to five or six. Tom Struble, manager of technology and innovation at R Street. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bianca. One of the main points of contention surrounding this massive merger is 5G technology. The FCC said in a statement that closing this deal will, quote, advance United States leadership in 5G. T-Mobile and Sprint plan to make 5G coverage available for 97 percent of Americans in the next three years. And in the next six years, they say the technology will reach nearly all of the population. 5G is the fastest wireless technology out there and a game changer. 5G means faster speeds and capacity. It will allow for telemedicine, driverless cars, and virtual reality. But the new technology has some setbacks, like the fact that it will change the landscape in neighborhoods and cities 